All right, gentlemen, late last week on Extra Time, somebody wrote in via Twitter asking you, Stevie, who your top five current center backs were. So it, it got us thinking, and we've had Paolo and you, Stevie, put together a list. But I want to see Paolo's list first. And at the very top there, you see Diego Godin. It's a full list, Paolo. No complaints from me here. But how is it that you arrived at the conclusion that ahead of Ramos, Chiellini, Pique, Varane, Godin is the number one center back presently in the world? I think he's the best pure defender in that group, and, and that was what ultimately decided it for me. You know, Sergio Ramos is a guy who, uh, of course, is one of the very best centre-backs in the world. Uh, he's someone who is decisive just constantly in, in the biggest games, uh, always shows up for his team when he needs it, who gets under the skin of opposing players, which I think is actually a real asset to his team as well. But Godin is just so reliable, you know. He's playing for a team, Atletico Madrid, who, of course, they're, they're not a team with, with no budget, but they're up there punching well above their weight, weight season after season with Barcelona and Real Madrid in La Liga. And that's because they start first and foremost with such a reliable defense. Uh, and that defense is without question founded on Diego Godin. He's the rock. He's a guy who you trust to enter into a physical battle with an opponent when he needs to. You know he's strong enough. You know he's capable of winning balls in the air. You know he's capable of, of holding his own in that part of the game. You know he's capable of winning a challenge on the floor when he needs to. But fundamentally, a lot of the time, he doesn't need to do those things because he's so good at anticipating the game, so good at reading the game, so good at understanding the strengths and weaknesses of an opponent. And, and, and I'm talking about individuals here and teams and knowing what is required of him in different situations. I just think he's... He's a defender. He, he, he's that first and foremost. And we were asked to name the best centre-backs in the world. And what I'm looking for in the best centre-back in the world is, is to be an extraordinary, extraordinary defender. And, and that's what Diego Godin is. Sergio Ramos, number two on that list. People on Twitter will say, oh, Stevie hates Sergio Ramos. You, you don't hate Sergio Ramos. Don't but, hate Sergio Ramos But explain what it is about him that kind of takes him out of that elite category for you. Uh, if you start with Sergio Ramos... As soon as you mention his name, people talk about the goals he scores in big games in the opposition's box. What's that got to do with defending? You know, as a defender, as a coach, you want your, your centre-back to go around the field with a big, fat cigar, <laughs> controlling everything, reading the play, you know, snuffing things out before they happen. You don't want your centre-back diving into challenges and picking up yellow and red cards. I mean, Ramos has got the world record for red and yellow cards. That's not what defending's all about. It's not about, it's not about tackling. It's about diffusing situations by picking up good positions and making good decisions. Where Ramos lets himself down is he gets caught out of position and he makes bad decisions, a la red and yellow cards. I'm going to go out on a limb and assume Ramos is not in Stevie's top five. <laughs> he is not. Uh, but, Stevie, walk me through this list here because it is well, was different. Well, it's the Godin. And Chiellini's in there at number two for the same reason. Just a pure out-and-out -out defender. You know what you're getting from him every day of the week. Varane, his pace gets, mm. in my opinion, his partner Ramos out of a lot of trouble. I, I, I think as a pair in him and Amtiti weren't the best in the World Cup, but as an individual, Varane was. I went for Miranda. I thought he had a great World Cup. Um, and actually, I went for Mr Van Dyke, although he mm. wasn't in the World Cup. He was at number four. Uh, right now, he's, he's, he's kicking the heels of Godin and, and all the other ones. Shaka, I know you can appreciate a quality mm -hmm. centre back. Uh, which top five did you like more? Um, I like Stevie's more. No, no disrespect, Paolo. Um, <laughs> but uh, as much as we, we and, and Paolo mentions it and, and defines it well, you're talking about defenders and you're looking at, at centre backs who defend first, but still. He has, uh, pa Paolo has Sergio Ramos ahead of Giorgio Collini, who I, I think is, a, again, an outstanding defender. Um, but, you know, I, I know the game has moved on in the, in the 20 years since, since I've been playing. I, as a goalkeeper, you need to have defenders who are only interested in defending. That allows everybody else, uh, the other defenders, to overlap and carry the ball and do whatever it is they, they want to do. But those players invariably are the least appreciated by, by those looking in. When you're standing behind them, that's who you want. Somebody who you can count on. You know they're going to be there when you need them regardless. That's your current top five. How about an all-time top five? Ooh. Paolo has filled this out for us. Uh, Stevie, I know you're pretty much in agreement with this five. Is that a fair categorization? Uh, agreement? I love it. Absolutely really? love it. I would, I would go as far to say as the top four, I find it impossible to rank them. 
I would say that Cannavaro definitely is fifth on that list, but the rest, I mean, you're, you, you're talking about guys that had every single thing you need, you know, a bit of pace, they had a brain, they could pass the ball, they could tackle when needed, they were inspirational, they were leaders. I mean, they were, the, the front four are just incredible football players, and Cannavaro, Cannavaro amongst that was just great. Of your top four, <laughs> None played in the 2000s. What is it about this era that has seen a, a dearth of high-end defenders? Uh, because everybody wants you know, to go forward and score goals. You know, defending has been shoved to the side as, as an afterthought. Uh, and personally, watching, watching games today, regardless of whether it's the Premier League or Serie A or Liga, defending don't really matter. You agree, Shaka? I, I, I do. Um, and and to, to Stevie's point, um, Bobby Moore did not have good pace. Bobby Moore was slow, but never out of position. And I think that's the difference between defending then and defending now. It is just about, or at times it feels as though you have to be able to contribute on the other end of the pitch to be appreciated. Can I just jump in and say that the, the one thing, or the biggest problem today, Defending now is all reaction. There's no, there's, there's no Bobby Moores or Baresis to read the game. That's the problem. It's all reaction and there's no, there's no thought before it.